And, you know, also, guys, take into consideration when you, you do see this slowdown or even a correction or anything else like that, don't, don't go run into the hills that the, the, the sky is falling down, right? There's, I don't see anything in the economic forecast to say that we're going to have a crash. I don't see any of it sure. and all those things that were happening in 06, 07, 08. They're sure. not prevalent. There's other things happening, of course, but uh, people still need to move. <laughs> Oh, sure. Webinar is now streaming live to Facebook, so we're alive. Hey, everybody. Welcome. We're knocking it out on Thursday. Not that any of you guys pay attention anyways, but here we are on Thursday with my good friend David Childers from Keeping Car Matters, where we talk about what's happening out there in the real estate world with real factual research data. It's coming up with the pricing, what's going on with pricing and what's going on with interest rates and What's going on out there in the world, David? What's going on? Good to see you. Well, yeah, it's good to see you. Good to be back uh, this time on a Thursday, not a Friday, but uh, good to be here. You know, there's a lot going on out in the world. I don't know that we'll be able to cover all of that or make sense of all of that, but, uh, you know, uh, big news this week, interest rates, prices, you know, uh, prices being, uh, you know, published this week, 19% growth in real estate. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then I'm going to talk about uh, kind of a situation where um, forecasters are struggling right now on saying what's going to come next. And I think that's a question on a lot of people's minds. I'm going to try to show you uh, and break it down as easily as I can on what, uh, what, what to really be looking at. But listen, there's a lot going on in the world, uh, you know, things in D.C. I don't know that we'll be able to, to solve all of that today, but no doubt all of it causing uh, more and more need for us to have the truth, you know, to be the, be the broker of truth uh, mm. to the clients we serve. Yeah, absolutely. There's always stuff going on and some of it's going to impact us one way or another. And, you know, a lot of stuff that's going on that is just poppycock. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. Poppycock. Yeah. And it's not going to affect you, right? We're still here. We survived another whatever it is, but listen, the market's always going to move. And here's the thing that I find fascinating is that the market's been the best market that it's ever been through mm -hmm. a pandemic. If that mm -hmm. doesn't give you reason and hope that on, on the concept of what you focus on expands, if you wanted yeah. it to be crappy, it was crappy. If you wanted it to be good, it was great. Yeah, right? I know right. people that are having record years. Mm -hmm. So Let's jump into it. What are you seeing? You you had yeah. mentioned something about rates going up over three percent. Yeah, oh Crazy. my god, you know? the market's going to crash. Yeah. You know, I think Johnny, kind of going back to your point, the market where it's at. Um, you know, controlling what we can control right now is the name of the game. And there's a lot in our business we can't control. All the other stuff happening out, and you know, every you know news outlet. DC shut down, all the things that are out there. Mm. That's chatter and noise. I'm not saying it's not in, uh, it's not significant because it is, but we can't control that. There's nothing we can do about that. Um, but we can bring the truth to the clients that we serve. So you know, there's a lot of people in uh, here on the webinar and online on Facebook. Drop your questions in, drop your comments in. Johnny and I'll try to watch that as we go along today. I always enjoy hearing that, questions that you have. Um, if you need uh, anything there, but let's start here with prices. Probably one of the biggest uh, things that's come out. I'll show you a couple of slides on that. Maybe we'll talk about that, Johnny, and then move into interest rates. But a uh, quote here from Bill McBride, uh, blog calculated risk. My sense is the Case-Shiller National Annual Growth Rate of 19.7%. Say that again, 19.7%. It's probably close to a peak in that year-over-year -year price increases will slow later this year. So, you know, kind of one of the big stories, uh, you know, FHFA, Case Shiller, uh, all the reporting houses coming out saying, you know, we're seeing close to 20%. In some areas, I'm going to show you above 20% appreciation year over year. Uh, big, big number in residential appreciation. Remember, that's always uh, a supply and demand issue. You know, there are fewer homes on the market, more people that want them pushing prices up. We've talked about that extensively here. In the time and Johnny and I, uh, you know, spend kind of breaking things down. And, and I think as a business, we understand that. But the clients that we serve are looking at this going, there's a lot of appreciation right now in residential real estate, even, 
you, you know, a lot of us going, gosh, how, how long can this continue, you know, uh, with mm -hmm. prices as they, you know, kind of trend upward. And, and I want to give you this just as perspective. This is from the latest FHFA map for regions with 20 plus percent price growth. The reason 20% there is in red, because you look at year over year price growth in residential real estate running extremely hot. But look at all the regions here, Johnny. I mean, a considerable price uh, appreciation everywhere. And FHFA says 19.2, CoreLogic says 19.7. Don't get caught up in the difference there. Let's just call that a lot of appreciation. A lot of appreciation. Uh, across the country. No doubt. No doubt. Look at that mountain appreciation. Extreme appreciation. Go ahead, right? John. Look at that mountain appreciation. It was because people are leaving. They're leaving their cities and going to the mountains. That's great. Well, the but, interesting thing is that, that that's a line really running out of California. There's a lot of people coming out of California with a lot of cash in their pockets, pushing up the prices in some of these areas uh, that they're moving to. Uh, so very, very much a, a trend there. Three places, so, California, Cook County, Illinois, and um, you know, yeah, New York and the Connecticut border right there. Yeah, they're yeah. Fleeing. They're fleeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me show you another perspective on this. Closings are set to decline roughly 10% year over year in the second half of 2021. And home price appreciation is on the cusp of flipping to a decelerating trend. So let me talk about that for just a minute. Ivy Zelman saying, you know, appreciation is on the cusp of a decelerating trend. I believe that is the next thing we will see in our business is price start to decelerate. Now, all that means is if we've been in this run up, Johnny, and we peak at 19 or 20%, which is a ton, and we start to come down, that means we could see 15% appreciation, 10% appreciation. Oh, no, 5% appreciation. We might appreciation or depreciation. Business. What's that? Appreciation or depreciation. I'm sorry, 5% appreciation, right. Mm -hmm. But people are going to feel like it, it's depreciation, which it's yeah. not. It's just mm -hmm. less appreciation. So be ready for that uh, decelerating appreciation on the horizon. Yeah. And, you know, also, guys, take into consideration when you, you do see this slowdown or even a correction or anything else like that, don't, don't go run into the hills that the, the, the sky is falling down, right? There's, I don't see anything in the economic forecast to say that we're going to have a crash. I don't see any of it sure. and all those things that were happening in 06, 07, 08. They're sure. not prevalent. There's other things happening, of course, but uh, people still need to move. Yeah, and and there's still a lot of people that want to buy homes uh, that we don't have homes for. A lot, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, equity across the country. You know, what also came out this past week, CoreLogic saying the average equity in this country has grown in the last year over $50,000. Average great. equity. You know, yeah. you want to talk about somebody who's sitting on the fence wondering, should we list our home? You know, the mm -hmm. question a lot of them have is, you know, what's it worth to how much equity do we have in our home? But mm -hmm. I think with prices, what we need to be on the lookout is, is this trend where we don't see as much appreciation and expect people to get concerned. Uh, we need to be able to speak to that uh, and, and speak to the trend of 20% appreciation is just not sustainable. It's not, it, it really isn't because incomes don't increase by that same percentage, right? So yeah, you just can't even get there. Um, now, also, when we're taking a look at everything that you just said, and I know we're going to get jump into rates and everything like yeah, that yeah. in a minute. Now, I'm probably jumping the gun on what I'm about to say, but if I don't say it, I'll forget it. So what I want to say is we're, we're probably fixing to see another surge, in my opinion, because as those rates start to creep up, FOMO yeah. kicks in. Right. Start, it gonna, motivates people. Absolutely. Right? Rates Absolutely. start to creep up and then uh, the appreciation slows down just a wee bit. So people think this is the time. So I think we'll see another uh, I think we'll see another surge of that. Yeah, sort of sort of a rally. You know what I mean? And uh, in, in that because people start to go, OK, I'm, did I miss out? You know, uh, and it feels like that. It also feels weird to say we're in an upward trending rate environment and the average 30 year fixed is 3.1%. But let's talk about that for a minute uh, and look at rates. So this look at rates going all the way back to January of last year. You know, we have the, the pandemic hit. Uh, we talked about this two weeks ago, Johnny. Uh, the Fed has to act. They can influence rates. They don't control rates and, and it influenced the rates lower. Now what happened in the last week, the Fed has come out and they said, we are going to tape or, or pull back on our bond buying 
uh, across the country. So the, the word they used was soon. Okay, they haven't, they haven't said they're going to do it yet, but they said there's coming soon. And the market's pricing that in. We saw rates jump from 2.88% uh, a week ago to the average being just over 3% uh, this week. And, you know, if you go to the, the, uh, the report from Freddie Mac that measures this on a weekly basis, many factors led to this increase, including, including the Federal Reserve communicating that it will taper its support of the capital markets. That's the bond buying process, you know, also known as quantitative easing, if you hear that uh, word. The broadening of inflation and emerging energy supply shortages, which compound other later shortages, no doubt. Uh, we're hearing about shortages in, in the economy, but you know, as the Fed sees the housing market on fire, they kind of start start to think, you know, maybe we don't need to do as much support uh, in in the bond buying program as we have been. And this is you know, the market's pricing in uh, that uh, you, you know that that tapering to begin. So rates are going up. You know, if we look at projections, these are the latest projections. I brought these last week and give you a couple of graphics. You know, certainly take a picture of this graphic if you're uh, if you're watching and listening today. But you know, sometime in the middle of next year, three and a half, three seven. You see there from Freddie Mac. You take the the, the average three and a half percent. Rates are going up. It's going to cost more uh, to to borrow the money to buy a home. You know, the graphic that I would be using. If I was talking to anybody that's kind of wondering, should we do something right now? It is a graphic like this. We we certainly have been in an environment. Uh, for the last several years of favorable rates last couple of years, and we're starting to, to tick back up somewhere between, uh, you know, I'm going to call it three and a half and four by the end of next year. Nobody's calling for rates to get out of control and shoot up uh, overnight by any stretch of the imagination, but, but beginning to, to, to go back up. So I think, Johnny, to your point, a couple of things are going to happen. You're going to see more people want to uh, reach out and say, "Hey, did we miss out? We want to, you know, increase the urgency." Um, and uh, and other people saying, "Hey, we may not be able to afford as much home going into next year as what we can today." So the cost of waiting is going to become a very real thing uh, for folks out there that are that are thinking about buying homes. Uh, in the Great market. video idea. What's the cost of waiting? Right, based yeah. upon those project projections, because a half a percent makes a difference. Yeah, I mean, I, I would take the average price point in your market. Maybe you have a lender partner that you want to record this with and say, hey, today where we're at at 3%, what does that look like at three, you know, three and three quarters? Uh, you know, if you financed three, four, or five hundred thousand dollars, and then we have people in all different price points uh, that, that watch these, but you know, it's, it's going to cost more. You will not be able to afford as much home next year uh, as you have been. And what's motivated, truthfully, Johnny, a lot of people to say, we want to do something right now um, in, uh, in buying a home that, that may say, you know what, we, we need to, to speed that up a little bit. Yeah. And you know what works perfect in this particular example? I hope everybody took the picture of that graphic, either one of them. I, the second one I like because it looks more dramatic. Yeah, yeah. Um, is take that and go to your TikTok and put that as your background and do a green screen of you talking about it. You can do it literally right now, right? You can put that out. Great piece of content talking about, hey, this is what the rates are projected to do. You get, you, you get, you can. Everybody's got a mortgage calculator on their phone, right? If you're an agent, you best have one. You can figure out what that cost difference is right now and say, hey, it's seventy five dollars. That that one right there. You know, oh, yeah, I was going to share it again, Johnny, so people could see it. Right. What's seventy five dollars? What's one hundred dollars per month? That's twelve hundred dollars a year. Right. What can you put twelve hundred dollars a year to times 10 years? It's twelve thousand. You want to give that money away or do you want to capitalize on that money for yourself? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and listen, if you want this slide, uh, you can email me. I'll, I'll give you the lab coat. They can get it out. Uh, it's just David at Keeping Current Matters. I'll send it to you. You can use it for that background. Johnny, you always have the best ideas for recording those videos and talking about what people are, um, you know, focused on right now. And, and I think this is one of those things that certainly they're hearing about out in the news. Uh, they're hearing about out in the world and we can bring, you know, the real world, uh, you know, application for our business to what, what does this mean? What does this mean for somebody that's going out to look to, to buy a home? What does this mean for somebody that 
you, you know, maybe thinking, uh, you know, you've missed out. And for anybody that thinks they've missed out, my, my first message would be, you haven't missed out. That'd be my first message or my first video. There's still time um, in, uh, in, in buying a home for a very, very favorable rate, but the outlook certainly is there going up. Right. And I just want to throw this out there too, right? When we, when, when we talk about some of this stuff, I know that your local market, well, let's call that the micro, right? You, you might be saying, oh, this, this doesn't, this, this macro data doesn't really pertain to my micro environment, but it does. Yeah. Because yep. mortgage rates are a macro product. They're not, right. you don't get one rate in this town and one rate in that town and another rate over in this state. It's, this is what the mortgage rate is from yep. the, wherever it comes from, right? Yeah, yeah that's um, a great point. So that macro data that we're talking about here, that, that, that's everywhere, right? That is 30 year fixed, conventional, whatever, whatever they use. That is the one rate versus your market might be a little faster or slower. If you're in DC and Virginia, it's always moving, right? Because that, that's the center of the hub of the world. Yeah. Um, but if you're in some other parts, so it might not that ma micro data, you know, might be a little bit different, but that macro data, concentrate on that. If you don't have anything to talk about in your local market, talk about the macro data. It was right there. Yeah, great point. Great point. You know, I think as we look at that, you know, kind of kind of macro data looking forecast are str struggling a little bit right now in, in where we're sitting the year. You know, normally this time, Johnny, I would bring a lot of forecasts for the fourth quarter and uh, I'm seeing people be hesitant about making those because they don't know what's going to happen. Uh, they're struggling there uh, in real estate. So let me share a couple of things about that, and we'll talk uh, a minute about that. Dana Olnick at CNBC says, fall is usually the start of the slower season for the housing market, but nothing is usual in today's pandemic-driven housing market. Potential home buyers are seeing a slight rise in inventory and consequently rushing back into the fray. Mortgage applications to purchase a home jumped 7% last week from the previous week. That is the highest level since April. So the last couple of weeks, you know, it's tick up in mortgage rate. I mean, mortgage applications, as we see the rate jump up, you will see those come uh, back down, you know, short term. But I think Johnny's right. We'll see uh, folks jump in to say, hey, I don't want to miss the rate. But the, the bottom line is right now, home sales are very difficult to forecast. And there are a couple of reasons for that. The, the primary reason are, these three lines right here. What this represents is annualized sales as they are reported each month for 2019, 2020, and 2021. You see 2019 in blue, uh, 2020 in orange there, and you know the progress of what's been reported uh, this year in 2021. Now, the bottom line is that 2020 was nothing like a normal year, which we saw in 2019. If we want to look at normal, we've got to go back to 2019. And you know, in 2020, we dipped down during the, the lockdown, came back and sort of did double duty in the second half of the year. And uh, and that was the year that that kind of led us into into this year. And, you know, we talked about on the front end of the year, hey, you're going to see year over year increases on the front half of the year on a lot of different metrics because of the dip down, you know, Johnny, I think we talked about it last time. Inventory shows a year over year increase in the spring because everybody pulled their homes off the market uh, the prior year. Well, we're about to move into the next, uh, you know, season, so to speak, of, uh, of you know, th this reporting scenario where we're going to be below what we did last year. You know, we did uh, so much. We packed so many sales in the second half of the year that you're going to see these reports. We've already talked about them. the market slowing down. There's truth to that. But year over year, you know, home sales are, uh, are are X percent below. This this metric is X percent below because of all the business we packed into the second half of last year. But in reality, we're be beating 2019. You, you can see here if we just take take 2020 off the the, the table there, what we've done this year has been better than what we did in 2019. And oh, by 2019 was one of the best years in real estate going all the way back to, you know, 10 years ago. You know, if we look at this right here, it's one year where we did more business than what we did in 2019. And, and that was uh, in 2017, just by just a little bit. You know why? Johnny, things are going very, very well, but you're going to hear that we're down uh, in real estate. Now, now let me let me say one thing before I, I turn it back over to you. 
home sales right now are very difficult to, to forecast. And, and, and what you're going to hear are a couple of things. You know, if we if we just maintain where we're at, you're going to see half the news outlets say, hey, we're doing great as compared to a normal year. And the other half say we're down year over year. Mm-hmm. And our job as uh, the professional is to be able to get the word out there and get the truth out there to where we truly stand. I'll pause. I know you wanted to say something, Johnny, uh, about that, but, but that's the that's the reality of forecasting right now. Well, there's two things I want to say. One is that graph that you had up there that shows uh, 19 uh, uh, 2019, 20, and 21. Mm-hmm. That's exactly how to lie with statistics. Compare last mm-hmm. year to this year. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. That ain't fair. You have to normalize right. it like you did, but they don't do that. And the second right. thing I want to say is why we had so much so much more sales in 2017 than 18, 19 or, or 20 or 21 is because I was selling them. Mm. You can see the direct impact makes, that I've had on the market. It's a difference. In production. <laughs> Absolutely. But, this is all excellent stuff. This is all excellent stuff. And it shows that the market is still strong. And what I noticed on this year, even though we're only at August or wherever it measured to, was it was still on an upward trend. Yeah. And what well, I that's noticed an interesting is- thing, because let me go, let me go deep. You kind of set me up and you haven't seen all these slides, Johnny, because that's the question right now. And, and if you really want to look at where we are at and where we're going, what you need to look at are active listings. So let's let's talk about that for a second, the trend that we're seeing in the market. Active listings in a normal market, this is 2017, 2018, 2019, peak sometime in the fall. Yeah, sure. That's that's normally what happens in our business. Well, if we want to go back last year to this abnormal year, active listings peaked in April of 2020. Okay. Hmm. So we came out of lockdown. People put their homes back on the market. Everybody wanted to buy a home and listings took a nose dive. That's the reality of, uh, and, and you, know, you want to talk about 19% appreciation? That's why. Available inventory. Now the challenge has been as listings fell, sales grew in the second half of the year. Okay, and that's been the essence of our business. I'm not telling anybody uh, anything they don't know. That's been the reality. Maybe visually it kind of helps you go, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So the real question, Johnny, when you you made a very good observation, real question is when will listings peak in 2021? Hmm. So that's that's the issue right now. Okay, so we depleted listings last year, started this year, depleted them more, and we've started to come back up. And there's probably a few scenarios. And if you want to know what's going to happen in real estate, Look at locally where you're at and what you expect to come, because there's probably three scenarios. One is we continue to grow listings and we cross over that line. We have a phenomenal fourth quarter. Uh, the, the, the second scenario is we kind of just hum along there. and We have a really good fourth quarter or we dip in listings like a, a traditional year and, and we still see a lot of uh upward pressure on prices. So I think there's uh, I think there's a lot of reasons to look at listings right now and say, okay, you want to forecast what's going to happen in real estate. It's, all, it's going to be all about listings. And, and, I, and I do think, Johnny, I think there are, uh, you know, cases to be made for more listings coming. You mentioned before that, you know, we're in a great, great market. I think sometimes human nature, people go, well, when's it going to crash? When's, when's this all going to end? Versus asking, how do I make the best of the market that we're in yeah. and maximize my potential? You know, and I think there's, there's three reasons that our team built out that, that we'll likely see more listings this fall. Pent up demand for sellers, no doubt. I mentioned uh, growth and equity, rising prices, growth and equity. People start to say, we can go out and do this. We can capitalize on that. New construction starting to take off. They've had a lot of headwinds this year on labor and land and all the resource lumber and all the issues that we've had there and forbearance is ending. Now we've talked about this and it's not going to mean a bunch of foreclosures, but people will be affected. People have to say, you know, we can't stay in the house. We can't afford it. And and we wish them the best. And oh, by the way, they can sell their home now and not, um, uh, not have to go into foreclosure. That's a good thing, you know? Um, 
So I think I think we're likely to see more listings, but that's where it's going to come from. That's where the future of the business is going to come from. Will there be enough homes for those that want to buy them? And listen, guys, I just did a survey inside of the group the other day because I've been seeing more and more people. And this corresponds to the Department of Justice lawsuit which or, or agreement that they rescinded from NAR, which opens up the door to, to something bigger, which all revolves around um commissions and, and mm-hmm. the listing the the seller paying the buyer agent commission and stuff like that and if that is impacted and some people are seeing it they they reported in the group that yeah we, it's normal around here listings is where it's at the millionaire real estate agent book talks about uh, listings leads leverage right so listings 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 you're going to get listings in an up market you're going to get listings in a down market that's that that's the way it is so you should be focused on that but the best way to stand out to the home seller is by being educated it is their biggest asset ever. If you're a financial advisor, you have to go through all these courses and everything to be able to talk about these in tests and certifications to be able to talk about these particular products, mm-hmm. right? Life insurance, health insurance, uh, the different health and what are life insurances and everything that are in, included. What are you doing every single day or once a week or something to become that educational source? Better yourself over that other person or the competition. It's not about them. It's about you. And what are you doing? This right here does the thinking for you. It does the thinking for you. So I would be putting this information out there as much as I could, as visibly as I could. And I'd have my cute little talking head face inside of there talking about it too. And if you don't have any crazy equipment, just go to Canva because you can do this all in Canva. Upload the slides, you can do a Mm -hmm. presentation and there you are in the little corner, right? So there's dozens of ways to be able to do this. I, I said Canva, TikTok, right? There's different ways to do this. Talk about, understand this economic data and, and, and be the educated source of your area. Yeah, I mean, and listen, all the resources, Johnny, that um, that you mentioned there, Canva, whatever you want to use, whatever platform, um, we have the we can do it now for free. Basically, you can record a video for free. You can put it on Facebook for free. You can email it out for free. You know, and, and that opportunity is out there. So, uh, and, and I think more than ever, people are looking for that. There's a lot of confusion. We talked, we started this call talking about all the chatter out there, DC shut down, inflation, this, that, control what we control, get the message out there. And, uh, and I think it'll be very well received. Yeah, don't, don't, you can't, you know, that stuff in your personal world, but what's going on with the real estate world, here's the thing. Real estate is like turning an aircraft carrier, right? You don't just turn it on a dime. And, and what I mean by that is the dot-com bubble blew up in 2000, right? 2001, arguably. The real estate market kept going super strong until 2006, seven, where it started to plateau and then it crashed. So the real estate, whatever's happening in DC today, probably is not going to affect you this week, next week, or the week after. It's mm-hmm. going to take years to catch up to you because the real estate market doesn't respond that quickly right so there's plenty of time and no panic in my opinion go out there and sell absolutely so johnny that's all i have that's uh the update for the last couple of weeks stay tuned as we get into the fourth quarter no doubt we'll get more information on that we're going to follow interest rates we're going to follow what's out there but um uh, always a lot to talk about always a chance to be the educator fourth quarter starts in what a day or two here saturday maybe Yep. tomorrow okay so there's only 30 days in september right are we in september 30 days in september uh so first quarter starts and listen when i was selling when i was training uh i always pushed lead generation you know usually from september throughout the fourth quarter right usually it was august september october then it was the holidays so you did your holidays things with you know, it does take time but you you prepared that always generated enough business for us going into the first and second quarter that it was able to give us this an amazing boost to the year. And it was like, we're able to coast for that and then in respond and then get back into lead generation, hardcore lead generation, August, September, October, right? Because the market sometimes dips right. in August. Um, so take this information, do some lead generation with it, do some videos, do a mailer, right? Uh, and where you can get this information is at keepingcurrentmatters.com and you can actually try it for free for 14, 14 days, David? Yep, 14 days. 14 days, go in there, take a look at the data, see what you can do with the data, 
and utilize the data. You can yeah. get that 14 day free trial by going to trykcm.com. You got it. Yeah. And, and right. once there, if you, you know, if it's right for you, we do it for $29 a month for everybody. So you get all this information, everything you need, content for videos, uh, you know, the post, all that uh, right there at your fingertips. So go check it out. Yeah. And if you tell them Johnny Mo sent you, they'll give you absolutely nothing extra. So don't That's tell right. them I sent you. Right. But for 14 days, you get this for free. So check it out. You're going to get emails, blogs, and so much information. I do believe that we as real estate agents need to be educated in this macroeconomic. Absolutely. Thanks David, for having me on, Johnny. Thank you for uh, being here and uh, have a great weekend. You as well. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.